Hey guys, welcome back. Welcome back. Well, guess what? I'm back. Um, in today's video, I'm going to share with you my journey of being diagnosed with gestational diabetes. So about a month ago, I was diagnosed with gestational diabetes after I took the three hour glucose test because I felt the first one, which was only an hour. And then the second test, the three hour test, the numbers were high, like each time, 140. So I had to go to the doctor. They gave me a sugary drink. And I had to wait an hour to test my glucose levels. And then I had to come back and then wait another hour and then come back and wait another hour, a total of three hours. And the number came out to be 140 which is high and so they diagnosed me and then referred me to an endocrinologist when i went to the endocrinologist um they gave me a plan a diet plan and i saw a dietitian and um i tried it out for a week and my glucose levels was weren't good the fasting numbers weren't good um because with your fasting number has to be 90 and below, and your um, numbers for after each meal for breakfast, lunch, and dinner has to be 120 and below after you test two two hours and below 140 after you test an hour. So it didn't work out for me, so I had to take. I have to take insulin. So she pres my doctor prescribed me insulin. And I must say it's it has been a difficult time, but I'm 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 doing better. It's just a new experience for me because I never um had preterm diabetes or diagnosed with diabetes before I got pregnant. Um I do have family members that are diabetic type one and two and several family members especially um my grandmother and and this is 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 very new to me i have to test i have to stick my finger six times a day because i have to test before i eat breakfast and then wait two hours and test again after i eat breakfast and I had to do the same thing for lunch and dinner. And then I have to eat three snacks a day and, um, and a nighttime snack. The insulin, I had to, I have to take four times a day. I have to poke myself six times six times a day, and I have to take insulin four times a day. Um, before a meal, I have to test my glucose levels, and if it's below one twenty, then I only take three units. And then, but if it's above, then I will have to go up a unit. So, and, and it's pretty much the same thing for each meal. But for for night, I have to take a nighttime insulin um, so that it can, I guess, keep my glucose levels at bay or normal throughout the night. So this is the pen that I'm using. Let's see. I don't know if you guys can be able to see it. This is the pen that I'm using. I probably have it upside down. It's a human log. Um, and pretty much you just put the needle on and then set the dial to whatever unit you need. And then there you have it. I don't know if you guys can see it. Yeah. 
that's what I have to take throughout the day. And this is the nighttime medicine, which is the Lantus. The Lantus is pretty much the same thing. You put a needle on, you put a needle on, and then you set the dial. With Lantus, though, I have to take 11 units. So, um, this is my my thing I use to poke my fingers. I take this and I use a needle, a small needle, and then I just put it on here, take the top off, put the top, this back on there, and then I just poke my fingers with it first. Make sure I clean my hand, my fingers so with um, with um, a personalized alcohol pad. So this is the machine I use to test my glucose levels. It's a pretty simple machine. And these are the testing strips. Let's see what it, they're like this, where you just poke your fingers and you put the blood on. So, and also the medicine that I take, um, it comes with separate separate needles like this that's detachable and that you use to take your medicine. Um, and that's what I have to do every single day. Every single day. Um, I, I'm also on a strict diet. Um, I can't have, I have to pair protein and carbs. But I can't, I can still have fruit. My favorite fruit to eat right now is blackberries and blueberries. Um, and then I like to eat sugar-free jello. Because those particular snacks keep my uh, glucose levels normal. Um, I do have to pair a protein with a carb. I can't overload on carbs. Because if I overload on carbs, it will raise my glucose levels. So I try to minimize how much carbs I eat. Like for instance, for breakfast, I, I may eat um, a, a whole wheat waffle with sugar-free syrup and two eggs. And that's pretty much it and it keeps my glucose levels normal and then after that I will eat a snack I drink a glass of milk and I'll eat blackberries or blueberries and jello and or in a string cheese and so I definitely have to watch what I eat right now um, I'm getting close to my due date I'm currently 35 weeks but my doctor told me that I most likely will be induced at either 37 weeks or 38 because of the plant they he doesn't want the the placenta to to deteriorate i guess or go out i don't i don't know something with the, the placenta so hopefully I, I mean i could it would be a blessing to make it to my due date but we'll see so far the baby is doing well um and so far, I'm keeping my levels good. I sometimes have issues with the, the fasting levels, though, when I wake up and test. Because you have to keep it below 90. And and, it, and mine's somehow get between 90 and 95. I, but I do keep it below 95, which is a great thing. Um, so that's pretty much what I would like to share. It was difficult at first, but then I got used to it. It's like a normal routine for me now. It's not that bad. All you're doing is adjusting your diet and follow the precautions that the, that the, your doctor set. And as long as you keep yourself healthy um, for the baby and for yourself, all together, you'll be fine. Um, it's not that bad anymore at first when I found out the news 
So I'm so happy that I'm able to be in that right frame of mind to just think about and feel excited about having my baby because I'm super excited and I can't wait and I'm sure hopefully um, things should go back to normal so that's all I want to share and I will give you guys an update on how I would do afterwards after I give birth um, update of what it's like uh, if I still, if it progressed to type 2 diabetes or I didn't, well, uh, well I'm not going to have diabetes at all. So, we'll see. But thank you guys for watching. Um, thank you guys. Uh, you can like, comment, and subscribe if you like. Um, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.